What percentage of take home income do most of the people allocate to whole life policies, to whole life policy or policies? Wonderful question. Let's map that out. So typically when I'm working with clients, so I'm just going to go off my personal experience working with people as well as myself, right? So whatever cash flow is times 12 equals balance, right? Whatever that number is, I times it by 66% and I tell the client, hey, now that you're debt free or now that you've eliminated and positioned yourself and now you want to transition from velocity banking to infinite banking, chunking 66% of your cash flow per year is a walk in the park, not hard to do. We know that you cash flow this, 66% of that is this, I can do it with my eyes closed, right? So let's say a person cash flows 30 grand a year. I would, that's where I start first. 19,800 would be my starter number, right? Then there's other equations, key, Perry, right? Where I look at um, how much money are they saving? Because that's typically the dollars that we're allocating to infinite banking in the first place is um, from their cash flow. And if they include it in the expenses already, I look at where are you saving money? Where are you investing money? Let's say this person is saving a thousand a year and they cash flow 30 grand a year, right? So that means they're cash flowing 2,500 a month and they included in their expenses saving a thousand dollars at a bank on their CD, on their money market account a bond, whatever it is. And then maybe they're putting in their 401k another thousand times 12 times 12, right? 12k, 12k. And then let's say they have an emergency fund of 25,000. Okay. So I say, okay, uh, uh, sir, ma'am, mom, dad, this money is not doing you any good. You know that now. You're earning less than 1%, maybe 1%. It's not doing any good. Me personally, with my own money, my own numbers, I have 100% of my savings dollars going to cash value life insurance because that's where I now position my savings. Savings dollars. Notice how the number is drastically lower, typically, right? And then their cash flow is 2,500 a month. So I haven't even gotten to the cash flow yet right? If I did, I start here, 66%, maybe 50, 45, whatever it is. Like I figure out what are they doing? They're building and running an operation, a business. Where's that cash flow currently doing? going, right? So the savings dollars is 12,000 for the year. So I say, okay, I would immediately start with 12 and then decide if we want to go a little bit higher. Then I look at, you know, their 401k and they, uh, let's say they come to the conclusion that their 401k, even though it's averaging six to 8% return, but they're paying 3% in fees, 2% in fees, and they got taxes and deferred taxes, inflation. They're like, you know what? I don't want to play that game. I want guarantees. That's okay. And they say, you know, what? I'm going to, I'd like to allocate 50% of that to the policy and I'll move the other 50% and I'm going to put it towards paying off debt. I'm going to put it towards starting my own business. Okay. So that's six grand. So now we're at six plus 12. So now we're at 18,000, right? then we still have the free cash flow. Now it's just up to the person to decide. Okay, let's say they are happy with that. Yeah, you know what? I don't mind taking 66% of my cash flow, but you know what? I want to start off uh, just 50% of my cash. Okay, so that's 15 grand. So we're at 15 plus the six plus the 12. You're at 33,000 per year. And now they have this, their emergency fund. And usually with the emergency fund, I might say the same thing, 66%, 50, 20. What do you feel comfortable with, right? Work with that. And let's say it's a uh, half that number, 12.5. So you got the 12.5 plus the 33,000, right? So 45,000. Say, okay, realistically, I can do 45,000 a year for the first two years, right? And then in two years, because I allocated 50% to starting my business, and then the rest of the other 15,000 in cash flow went to the business, in two years, my income increased. Now it's nothing to do 45K a year. And I'm going to determine 
that I want to pay in 45k a year for at least 10 years, but have the ability to go to 20. They might say that. So usually when I'm figuring out that long term number, you know, I just add it up for them. I said, okay, so 45,000 times 20 years is $900,000. Is is that ideal? Is that realistic? You're you're 50 years old. So you're telling me from age 50 to 70 that you're going to keep doing 45k? Is that realistic? And they say, yes, Denzel, that is because I've been saving for the last 30 years, last 25 years. I said, okay, you got a good track record then. Great. But let's say I'm dealing with a person that is, you know, 50 and they want to do 20, but they've never saved a dollar in their life. I said, I don't know the likelihood of you doing that. Maybe the first year you're all excited, but come the second year, excuse me, come the second year, you've got, you got one uh, emergency, uh, unexpected expense, you lose your job. Now what? Now you got a $45,000 bill to worry about. Now it feels like a bill. You had all these great plans and whatnot. So back to you, Key, when I'm looking at people's numbers and stuff, I do the same thing I do in Velocity Banking World, you know, cash flow times 12 times 66% gives me like a healthy number range to start with. I then see how they're separating their dollars. Okay, you save X and you've got this going to this investment. You've got this emergency fund. Okay, cool. And I'll take the numbers, give, give them something that I know they can do. And then here's the next thing I do, right? Here's the next thing I do. I have a little formula that I've been um, working on with clients that get to the point where they're ready to put a whole life policy in place is I look at their, uh, I don't even have a name for it yet, but I look at their commitment levels. Can I spell commitment right? I look at their commitment levels. I will ask them general questions about their money and their relationships. Money and relationships intertwine, right? There's no doubting that. So I'll ask how long they've been married, right? How long have you been with the person that you love, how long you've been married together. Let's say that person says 20 years, Denzel, going strong. Love it. Then I ask husband and wife, I ask them, how long have you been saving money? How long have you been investing money? How long have you been debt free? It's like a general, right? Pretty general. They might say 10 years consistent. Now, I don't really care too much about the number that they've been saving. I care about the length of time consistently. I'd say, hey, consistently, how many years consistently have you saved money, right? How many years consistently have you invested money? So they say, they say 10, they've been investing for 15, they've been debt-free for five years, okay? Let's get the median number. 20, 10, 15, five, divide by four. I say, um, Key Perry, you have a average commitment level of anything that you do in your life, 12 and a half years, based off of time you've been married, time you've been saving, time you've been investing, time you've been debt free. I may add other things like um, the amount of, uh, how many years have you, been, have you been raising children, right? I might add that number. Uh, haven't really thought of any other critical questions that are general, not too, not too personal, right? Like, I don't want to ask, you know, how many, how many relationships you've been in, right? That, that's, that's not a value to me. I don't want to ask how, oh, I could ask this, right? This was a question I asked. Job, career, how long you've been at the same career, job, or biz? That's actually a really good question. How long have you been in business? Because that is not easy. Being in business consistently for over five years is hard, hard right? So whenever I come across people that have a track record of being in business over five years, um, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, that's, that's beautiful, right? That shows good commitment levels. So that's what we're solving for. I say, okay, Key Perry, um, you've got an average commitment level of 12 and a half years. So you want to pay in 45K, I would say conservatively 45K for 12 years. Anything above that, you're stretching your commitment. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? So 45K for 12 years, 540,000. And let's say you're 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old. The older you get, I believe might be the, the I would say, depending on what your position is as you get older, typically is harder to commit 
to longer term things. All right, I would say it's especially when regards to money, if we're not positioned, if you are positioned 59, you're retired 55, you're good, you're set, there's nothing to you, right? 20, 30 year commitment. Yeah, yeah, no problem. To me, I try to get my clients to think in 20, 40 and 100 years. I want you to start thinking multi-generational. One generation's 40 years. When you start thinking in that type of distance, you're thinking beyond yourself now. You become way more dangerous when you make it about we and not me. You make it, you become way more dangerous when it's about us, not I, all right? When you make it about community, kingdom, you become dangerous. You become a threat to the system. So hopefully that helped, Key. That's how I think. When I'm working with cl clients, you know, comment below. Let me know if I'm on the right path there. Jamal says, sorry, I think it's a loan. It's simple interest, but they do also have lines of credits. Okay, cool.